viewer. Do not forget to join the Patreon to get videos earlier, script access and an exclusive Discord. You will no longer be empty and frantic. Thank you. Between New Zealand and New Caledonia sits Norfolk Island. With a total area of 34.6 square kilometres, it is almost two and a half times larger than Lord Howe Island, a distant neighbour we covered in a previous video. Due to the huge isolation of Norfolk Island, only animals that could fly or swim at least 900 kilometres could call this place home, and once they populated this area, they had a vast availability of resources. In the last instalment in this series, we spoke about Lord Howe Island, which much like Norfolk Island, suffers similar isolation from any other land masses. So it is important to compare the similarities and differences between these two islands. While Lord Howe Island has the Kanisha Palm, Norfolk Island has the Norfolk Island Pine. These important exports also show their differences. While Lord Howe Island has high altitude plants, and was isolated for longer having less introduced species, Norfolk Island is flatter, with its highest point, Mount Bates, coming in at 319 metres, or 1047 feet in height. Meanwhile, Mount Gower, in Lord Howe, is 875 metres, or 2871 feet in height. Norfolk Island also has a drier climate in comparison to Lord Howe, but is still considered subtropical. This and massive ecological destruction by humans makes Norfolk Island overall seem less biodiverse than its distant neighbour. This isn't entirely the case. Norfolk Island holds an important amount of biodiversity, with 17 endemic birds, 8 of which being alive today, hosting the largest fern in the world that grows over 20 metres or 66 foot in height. As well as this, it has one of the largest tiger shark populations in the world, and the southern Phillip Island is a nesting site for 12 species of seabirds, and has three endemic plants found nowhere else in the world, making it just as equally biodiverse in its own right. At one point, it was even more biodiverse than this, so before we go into the wacky animals of Norfolk Island, let's go over the history of this place. Yo, we now have channel membership, so feel free to join that or the Patreon like these lovely people. Thank you very much, and let's get on with the video. Unlike Lord Howe Island, however, ha ha ha, Norfolk Island was discovered by Polynesians and settled during the 14th century, but was abandoned due to poor farmland quality and its isolation. This Polynesian group left one key legacy, Polynesian rats, which hurt the bird populations, but were otherwise still pretty tolerable. As you likely know, where there is subtropical land, Europeans will settle, but first it has to be discovered. The first European to discover the island was the pretty famous Captain James Cook, and in 1744 this colonizer would name it Norfolk Island, after a noblewoman called Mary Howard, Duchess of Norfolk. Apparently, it was in honour of the lady's family and not some sort of relationship. However, I would argue this is a bit like getting a tattoo of your ex, especially with her dying upon Captain Cook's return, which just makes the whole situation a little bit more awkward. The island was a penal colony throughout the late 18th and early 19th century, all the way up until 1853, when it officially became a settlement. The harm in this time came in the form of hunting the local animals such as the Norfolk Pigeon, and in 1788 releasing house mice to Norfolk Island. It underwent significant development during this time, with multiple introduced invasive animals and plants. Land clearances for agriculture and exporting wood led to significant damage to the environment. Norfolk Island flax was important for cloth and sails, but also for livestock that would go feral and harm many endemic birds. Polynesian rats were tolerable, house mice were harmful, but during World War II in 1943, the USS Renaki ran aground into a reef during a typhoon. This military ship was likely responsible for introducing the black rat to the island, though there is a genuine case for rats being introduced slowly before then. With the extinction of the Norfolk Triller happening in 1942, this helps the idea that rats were already on the island, and this was perhaps boosted by the USS Renaki. 
In response to concerns about endangered species on Norfolk Island, in the 1970s, the Norfolk Island National Park would be set up in 1984 to help endangered species bring tourism to the island and protect the unique ecosystem found on Norfolk Island. The Norfolk Island National Park would be set up in 1984 to help endangered species bring tourism and protect the unique ecosystem of the island. With all these people coming to Norfolk Island, I thought we would first take a look at the extant species of the island, those that still live on today. Starting off, before we get into the more unfortunate birds, the Norfolk Island Jerry Gon is completely fine. That's right, for the first time in one of these videos we have an animal a few words. It's least concerned by the IUCN and seems to be doing fine. Now on to the more worrying species. The Norfolk Grey Fantail measures in at 15 centimeters in length, it has a unique chirpy song and hunts in a similar way to other fantails, catching insects in the air and on the ground. It is another animal that is least concern. The Norfolk Island Golden Whistler holds slight isla dwarfism and is a subspecies of the Golden Whistler. It has a longer tail and a heavier bill in comparison to its mainland counterpart, but is still overall smaller. The Norfolk Robin was only recently identified as a distinct species in the late 90s. It is the largest of the Pacific Robin group, though it is smaller than the mainland Scarlet Robin, of which it was once grouped with. Both of these species have suffered severe decline because of deforestation and the introduction of cats and rats, yet their generalist diet of invertebrates, their confidence in feeding in gardens, and a recovery effort has allowed them both to recover fine. The Norfolk Island Golden Whistler has an estimated 535 breeding pairs since 2005, with 400 to 500 breeding pairs in 1988 being attributed to the Norfolk Island Robin. The Norfolk Island Robin is classified as endangered, meanwhile the Norfolk Island Golden Whistler is classified as vulnerable. Phillip Island's expiration of many Norfolk endemics due to the introduced feral cats, rabbits and dogs has led to a movement to reintroduce the Golden Whistler and the Pacific Robin to this island. All feral animals have been eradicated, so this is very much possible. The slender-billed white eye is a relative of the thought-to-be-extinct white-chested white eye. It is classified as near-threatened, living in the moist lowland forests of the island. It is a common prey for the Norfolk Island Bubuk. Do you remember my video on the Atlas Lion? Well, you probably don't, but if you do, you will remember the distinct story of how this animal lives on in zoo populations today. Well, a similar story can be found in the Norfolk Island Bubuk, an animal that is extinct, but genetically alive inside living birds. It is the apex predator of Norfolk Island, hunting many birds, including the slender-billed white-eye, and the many large populations of invertebrates on Norfolk Island, such as giant grasshoppers. Norfolk Island Bubuk DNA is alive in living hybrids, and due to this, it is considered a living species by the EPBC, Act of Australia, which is an official authority on the matter. In 1986, only one female bird was found alive, incredibly tragic, and one of the Brubucks bred with her in a program. In 1989 and 1990, she fledged chicks, before disappearing in 1996. Females on Norfolk Island are notably larger, meanwhile New Zealand moorpork females are similar size. This led to some challenges when breeding the birds. By 2018, 40 to 45 Norfolk Island Bubuk hybrids existed, having undergone inbreeding and ageing problems. The modern animals are more similar to the New Zealand moorpork than they are to the original birds. But this was a last ditch effort to make sure the subspecies survived. Hopefully further efforts will be made to preserve the species, as there is still value in making sure the original niche of the Norfolk Island Bubuk survives, and making sure its genetic legacy lives on. The Norfolk parakeet, Cyanamphorus cookai, was named after THE James Cook. Some argue it is synonymous with the Lord Howe parakeet, and for a while it was classified as nothing but a subspecies of the red-fronted parakeet in New Zealand. The classification of this bird is simply still up in the air in 2025. The Norfolk green parakeet was restricted to Mount Pitt eventually, 
due to the introduced predators to Phillip Island and all of the surrounding Norfolk Island. The flowering plant Akiaki and the Neo plant, I think I said that incorrectly, and the Norfolk pine made up 85% of their modern diet, with these Gen Z parrots also being infested with human introduced plants. African olives and cherry guava are frequented by the Norfolk parakeet, which likely made early settlers see them as pests. By the 1970s, only 50 animals were left in the wild, but conservation in the 80s through to the 2000s led to 250 fledged birds. Though they still have to cope with rats, European starlings, and cats, so this means their population is limited in range. Nesting boxes to prevent rats have been made, However, with fewer hollow trees to breed and fledge, one must question if these animals can survive without human intervention. The option to bring the Norfolk parakeet to Phillip Island is being seriously considered, due to the absence of vermin and safety in comparison to the mainland. A census in 2009 put them at 240 birds. In 2013, an estimated only 23 breeding pairs remain. This bird is in a battle with a huge amount of invasive species, we can only hope it makes it. Unfortunately, things get worse from here. 11 extinct species, two undescribed, and one potentially surviving. We've covered quite a few rails on this channel, however, today's species likely went extinct at the earliest time, being 1800. It was likely very unique in comparison to other rails. Its only depiction and writings, when it was alive, say it was a shy bird and had a sparse population on the island, likely due to Polynesian rats. It was thought to be herbivorous, wading through water, it had a stripy chest as shown here, though the accuracy of this could be brought into question. We don't even really know the date of its extinction, and it is only confirmed in some bones at subfossils, as well as of course some writings. There's also a proposed Norfolk Island snipe, though it is undescribed and I couldn't really find much on it. The Norfolk Island ground dove was written off as two distinct species and went extinct sometime between 1790 to 1800. Its recognition is entirely up for debate. Whilst the main source written in 1791 describes a female extant species, the common emerald dove, the male identified has traits not seen in living species. Furthermore, subfossils of the Norfolk Island ground dove do not match any known species, so it likely does exist, but is incredibly elusive. The New Zealand kaka is an iconic parrot, and what would Norfolk Island be without its own kaka species? They had some pretty interesting differences. For example, the bill size of the Norfolk kaka is noticeably robust in comparison to the New Zealand kaka. It was also more vibrant, but the mainland kaka was on average slightly larger, with a size of up to 45 centimetres, while the Norfolk kaka has an average size of 38 centimetres, which is on the low end of the New Zealand kaka in size range. The specimens collected from Norfolk Island and Phillip Island in the 1830s were seen as distinct species by ornithologist John Gould. He named them Nesta norfolkinensis and Nesta productus, but later comparison shows that they are in fact the same species. John Gould would go on to give the first description of the Norfolk kaka. He would later even go on to work with Darwin. It would have been far more terrestrial than the New Zealand kaka, coming down to the ground to feed on flowering shrubs and trees, making it pretty easy to catch and kill, and eventually turn into a taxidermy. Or even, as some accounts put, as a pet. The second penal colony likely led to a huge destruction to the environment. This and killing for food and entertainment made them a scarce sight in the 1830s. By the late 30s, they were completely absent, with Officer Abel D.W. Best being known for collecting ornithological specimens. He did not find a single kaka. The last ever Norfolk kaka would die in captivity in 1851. Today its legacy lives on in 16 taxidermy specimens in various conditions. The Norfolk Pigeon was a subspecies of the New Zealand Kiru. They are very closely related, having only diverged in the Pleistocene, with the cute nickname of Woodquest in reference to a West Midlands and Southwestern English name for wood pigeons. 
The Norfolk pigeon was likely impacted by Polynesian rats on the island, and the introduction of cats, weasels, and people likely led to their decline. Abel Best's writing once again comes in handy. He said they were a frequent sight, with his journal mentioning successfully hunting 72 birds at one point. Humans were almost certainly the nail in the coffin. The last bird was shot in 1901. Their extinction is once again immortalised in 20 taxonomic specimens. The Norfolk starling was a close relative of the Lord Howe starling, both being subspecies of the Tasman starling. They were quite unique, having greyish brown colours with a glossy metallic green from head to throat. Overhunting and competition with introduced European species likely led to their extinction, since it went extinct in 1923 and rats had not arrived. The extinction of the Norfolk starling is rather bizarre and random, especially considering the Lord Howe starling was only eliminated because of invasive rats in 1918, reportedly being abundant before then. One of the most elusive animals on Norfolk Island is the Norfolk triller. It was a passerine bird of the family Camp Nafidae, which cuckoo shrikes belong to. Don't be mistaken, they are neither a cuckoo nor a shrike. It was slightly larger than mainland counterparts, creating cup-shaped nests like many Aussie birds. This animal was said to be abundant in 1941, but was last recorded in 1942, likely due to an invasion of black rats on Norfolk Island and the clearance of habitat. With the introduction of the stamp in 1971 to commemorate the Norfolk Island pigeon, you may get the impression that the island had changed its stance on its native wildlife. You'd be right, but the Norfolk thrush would not be so lucky. The Norfolk thrush was a nominate subspecies of the island thrush. They were pretty adaptable to the new human residents, even nesting in the introduced lemon tree. However, the intense amount of invasive black rats and feral cats, as well as the introduction of the song thrush and blackbirds, led to interbreeding and sterile offspring. The last one was recorded in 1975. The white-chested white-eye is a pretty sad later addition to the list, a relative to the silver-eye and a member of the family Sosteroipidae. It was a small, vibrant little bird, eating fruits, berries, nectar and insects, a niche also taken up by the Norfolk pigeon. Habitat destruction and the introduction of the silver-eye, which displaced the white-chested white-eye from its breeding range, led to a severe decline. In the 1960s, 50 birds were found, and in 1986, Norfolk Island National Park pledged to save the bird, but surveys failed. They were almost entirely restricted to Mount Pitt. Their low reproduction rate of two eggs was a big contributor. In 1978, only four individuals were monitored, and in 2000, only one was sighted. Birdwatchers claimed to see one in 2005, though this has not been confirmed. Though they could still be alive, since 2000 the Australian government has considered them extinct, marking another failure to save a species on Norfolk Island. 200 years of actions led to the extinction of 11 species found nowhere else in the world. Very little can be found in blaming the Polynesians, the penal colony, or the ornithologists' actions. We can only act today to preserve the land, and make sure the surviving animals recover and thrive once more and the Norfolk Island National Park, the local people and government seem committed to this idea. Things are slowly improving, anti-predator fences and the eradication of pests is slowly taking place on the island. It is going to be a world-leading operation to show how to fix the damage humans have done, and I am optimistic the seven endemic species on the island can survive. So much care has been brought into these projects, eradicating predators from Phillip Island, replanting plants for parrots to feed off, building homes for the Norfolk Bubuk, and controlling the many weeds that have infested Norfolk forests. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. Goodbye for now.